Happy New Year! Thank you so much for watching. This is a very special podcast, something I'm very passionate about, and I want you to stay tuned to this because I want you to listen all the way to the end. I'm going to give you a very specific challenge for your new year in 2015. You know, I'm believing that this is going to be a banner year. I actually heard that phrase and just grabbed hold of it, started confessing it and believing it for myself and for my team here at TSFM, and I want you to grab hold of that too, a banner year in 2015. You've probably heard that phrase before, but what does it mean? Well, I'm glad you asked. This is what a banner year is. It's more than expected, above expectations, very successful financially, outstanding, unusually good, extremely profitable, or otherwise successful year for a person or organization. I like that, don't you? But here's the thing. You can't have a banner year if you don't define what a banner year means to you. You know, I heard Jim Rohn tell this story one time. He said when he was first learning about success and about setting goals, he said his mentor, Earl Schoff, said to him, he said, Jim, let me see a list of your written goals. I think I can help you out with a few ideas. Jim said, I don't have a list of my written goals. He said, you don't have your goals in writing? Jim said, no. He said, well, then I bet I can guess your bank balance within a few hundred dollars, which he did. And Jim said, that got my attention. So Jim said, you mean if I wrote my dreams and goals, my bank balance would be higher? Earl Shove said, drastically higher. There's a key here. You've got to have your dreams and goals in writing. Well, you know, most people do set New Year's resolutions, but statistics show 93% of those who set New Year's goals go unfulfilled. 93%, that means 7% are the only ones who are fulfilling their dreams. They say 30% are broken within the first week. I also heard where 80% of people who join a gym, they drop out after eight weeks. So they probably signed a one-year membership, but that's 10 months of giving up on their dream. Well, I want this year to be different for you. I want you to not only set some goals, but stick to it. And you know, a lot of times we set the typical goals like get closer to God, lose weight, save money, get out of debt, get the house organized, spend more time with my family, um, read the whole Bible. We set these big goals and it's so overwhelming, we don't even know where to start, so we don't. <laughs> we just don't do any of it but you've got to get focused. And there's certain things, I want to share some tips with you, seven tips to help you set goals the right way that will help you stay focused. See, the thing is, you've got to have a target. You've got to have a bullseye that you're aiming towards all year long. You've probably heard the phrase, if you aim at nothing, you'll hit it every time. Well, you know, Napoleon Hill, the guy who wrote Think and Grow Rich, he actually did research on people who, you know, had failed different times. And, and he said, I want to know what is the major cause of failure? Why are they failing so much? He said 98 out of the 100 people he analyzed had no aim. They had no target. Uh, you know, he went on to say, there is no hope of success for the person who does not have a definite goal at which to aim. Now, here's the thing. Goals are simply dreams with deadlines. So I want to share with you seven tips real quick to get your goals together for this new year. And then I'm going to give you a 30 day challenge that I'm not only asking you to do, I'm doing it myself. So here we go with my seven tips. Number one, goals must be in writing. Bottom line, you can't just think it, you have to ink it. You know, the Bible tells us, write the vision and make it plain on paper. It's been proven that your chance of success increases by 98% when you put your goals in writing. That's a pretty high statistic. You know, you've probably heard the story how Napoleon Hill, he also, not only did he analyze the major cause of failure, but he wanted to know what's the cause of success. So he actually interviewed 500 of the world's wealthiest people back then. People like John D. Rockefeller, Thomas Edison, Alexander Graham Bell. I mean, the richest people in the world at that time. He came back to see if, if they had something in common. Was there a certain success trait that they all practiced? And in fact, they did. You know what it was? They all had clearly defined written goals. Clearly defined written goals. Number one, put your goals in writing. Number two, goals must be measurable. You know, there's a difference in saying, I will lose 15 pounds versus I will weigh 120 pounds by March 31st, 2015. See, whenever you're setting a goal, always answer these two questions. How much and by when? You want to save money? How much 
by when. Don't just say, I'm going to save money. No, how much and by when. Don't just say, I want to get out of debt. How much debt and by when. So number two, goals must be measurable. Number three, goals must be specific. You have to be specific. Don't just say, I have a car in 2015. I have a car. Well, that could, be, that could mean a lot of things. Be very specific about the car you're believing for. Is it a 2014, 2015 white BMW? Then write it down. Write down exactly what you're believing for. You've heard the phrase, vague goals produce vague results. Number four, goals must be realistic. Don't set yourself up to fail by setting a goal that is so unrealistic that the chance of it happening is really, really slim. Now, I'm not saying don't have great faith, but you know, years ago I met with my team and I said, you know, I want you to set a big goal five years from now. Well, one person in particular said I have half a million dollars in my savings. That was their big goal for five years into the future. Well, I met with them about 10 months later and I said, you know, goals don't just happen because you write them down. You have to take action. And I said, now the person who said you have half a million dollars in savings, that means you've been saving $8,333.33 every month. I said, that's amazing. And you could just see their eyes get real big, like that's not happening. Well, they weren't even close to saving that much. And I'm not putting them down. I'm just saying, set a goal that's realistic. Start with where you are and then grow from there. Number five, goals must stretch you. Now, I'm not contradicting myself with what I said with number four, but I do want to challenge you to set at least one goal that stretches you, a stretch goal. And it could be something so big like, I'm gonna write the book, I'm gonna release my album, I'm gonna sing in front of an audience, I'm gonna lose 50 pounds, I'm gonna finish my degree, or I'm gonna pay off those school loans, whatever it is, set one goal that is a stretch goal. Number six, goals must have a deadline. Why? Deadlines are motivating. You know, they say the most productive day of the year is the day before vacation. Why? <laughs> you got a deadline. You get everything done that you've been putting off for weeks and months because you have a deadline. The best way to get your house cleaned up is invite company over. <laughs> Why? Because there's a deadline. So you've got to have a deadline with your goals. And number seven, goals must be in sight. I think this is where a lot of times people fail in the goal setting process is they do write the goals, they do everything I just listed, but they put them somewhere never to be looked at again. Out of sight is out of mind. And you know, this comes straight from the Word of God. The Bible says, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he, or so does he become. There's a law in the Word of God that says you become what you behold. Whatever you think about, you bring about. That's why I recommend getting our Dreams and Goals app for your smartphone. Get the Dreams and Goals notebooks. Make a vision board. Keep the goals before your eyes. So that's vital in you fulfilling your dreams because you're thinking about it all day long, you're moving closer towards it. So the challenge I wanna give you this month is a 30-day challenge. Here's what I want you to do. Get out a piece of paper, get a little notebook if you have one, and I want you to write your top 10 goals for 2015. In other words, it's December 31st, 2015, and you look back over the year and you say to your friends, this has been the most amazing year of my life. Now, what needs to happen for you to say something that bold and that exciting? What needs to happen in your life? That's what I want you to write down. So write your top 10 goals on page one. Now the next day, turn the page and do it again. But don't look at what you wrote on page one. If you don't remember all 10, that's fine. They weren't all that important to you, but just write the ones that mean the most to you. The next day, do it again. Next day, do it again. Write them down. I'm not talking about using your iPad or your phone. Write them down with pen and paper. There's something powerful that happens and it causes you to get crystal clear and laser focused on what you want to accomplish. Do this for 30 days. Now you might say, Terry, that takes a lot of discipline. Well, goal setting and self-discipline go hand in hand. This is what's gonna cause you to come to the end of the year and say, look what happened. So I challenge you to do this and if you can't remember all this, then I want you to set an alarm on your phone so when that alarm goes off, you say, oh yeah, write my goals. And get out your little notebook and write it down. One more thing. I would love to pray over your goals. I would love for you to send me your list of 10 so I can join my faith with yours because 
I have an anointing, a gift to pray for discipline for you to achieve your goals. So just click on the link, the description that you see there and send me your top 10 goals for 2015. And I'm just telling you, me and my team are going to print them out and we're going to pray over them. And I want to join my faith with you. 2015 is going to be your banner year. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Thank you.